Hello and welcome to my narrative interview presentation. My name is Lorena. The person I have interviewed relevant to my future is Favel Parrott. Favel Parrott is an Australian author, most notable for her book Past the Shallows. She grew up in Tasmania with her single mum, brother and grandparents before moving to Victoria, where she began her writing career and volunteer work at the Dingo Discovery Sanctuary. In her own words, Favel is the lover of nature who found direction and purpose in her life through writing. Favel has worked in many different jobs through her life. Her journey starts as a high school graduate. After several part-time jobs, she worked as a postman for close to 30 years until her brother encouraged her to pursue writing, something she loved since childhood. She's now a full-time best-selling author, but her life hasn't been easy and her career journey far from straightforward. Favel recalled a lot of her experiences growing up in Tasmania, a place which she so desperately wanted to escape. She describes the loneliness of the island, the ancient and sad history of the convicts, the wild nature of a place. As a sensitive child, she felt all of that, and it scared her. To cope with this, Favour would often daydream, but was told constantly that this was a waste of time. In this cold and isolated childhood, she discovered a ship called the Nelladan. That changed my life because Hobart was really grey and dull, and it made the world big. I was like, oh my God, you can go to Denmark. Like, you can go to Antarctica. Like, I was suddenly like, you can get off this island. <laughs> so I decided that I was going to be a sailor and go on Nelladan and go to Antarctica. Years later, she found a photograph of this ship, leading her on a research journey that would reunite her with the crew, create an exhibit for the ship in Denmark, and end in a book that would heal her. The story of the Nelladan helped her through her childhood, and afterwards, it would help her to be able to go back to Tasmania and see it as a place she now loves. But after leaving Tasmania as a teenager, she stopped writing completely for nearly 30 years and committed to being a full-time postman instead. Her brother was the starting point for her career and life change. I'm a high school graduate. I don't have a degree. Who am I to be a writer? I'm not good enough and I'm not even going to try because it's impossible, right? But my brother, he said, well, what about you? Are you going to be a postman forever? And he really got at me. He's the only person who can do that. After a writing course at TAFE and five years developing a novel, after many setbacks and rejections, she got into a manuscript development program with a publishing company, but was told, you won't get a publishing deal and Australian fiction doesn't sell. However, one of the publishers encouraged her to take her writing full time. She quit her job and wrote as her work, always with a little bit of hope. A year later, against all odds, Past the Shallows was published. When speaking with Favel, I found her values coming to light in her stories. Her family was something she strongly emphasised as the reason she was able to get through the toughest times and eventually become an author. The relationship between siblings is evident through all her books and draws on her club of life. Yeah, my brother and I are really close. That relationship is like the longest relationship you have in your life. I know I've kind of told that same story. Yeah. about siblings having to rely on each other to survive hardships. She also spoke about how her granddad influenced her from a very early age. The kindness of her grandparents shaped who she is today. It's incredible kindness when they had nothing. They were really poor working class immigrants. and But it's, all we needed was there and the love and protection have made me who I am. Absolutely. And so they're there all the time with me. So they're there in the books. As saw as she recalled stories of her grandparents, her brother, her journey to writing and the story of her sailor dreams, key values were brought up that reflected who she is as a person and the way she writes and conquers change and challenges. This reflects Michael White's absent but implicit theory that the stories of self lie beyond the problem story. I latched onto her frequent mentions of hope and working at the Dingo Sanctuary as an important ideal for her. I've got to have that hope. I've got to take that hope and I've got to share that hope because if people don't have hope, they're not going to try and save Alpine Dingoes. Yeah. Or they're not going to try and be better or they're not going to try and fight climate change or try and fight racism. They're just going to, if we have no hope, we've got no energy. This is the other thing that my brother would always say to me, Fave, people get published as books in the bookshop, so why not you? In Favel's eyes, the future of work for Australian writers has never been more exciting. We touched on the future of literature in a digital age, to which she says, the book is not dead and people will always need stories, so writers will always find their place. 
we just need to evolve. Australian literature is still vastly overshadowed by American and English media, but that is slowly starting to change. I feel like we are just on the cusp of all of these new voices that are about to bust onto the scene, you know, from refugee Australians, African Australians. And then I think we can, you know, stand up and say we've really, Australian writing has come so far. I'm really excited. I want to hear from those who don't have voice yet. Fable has had such an incredible and inspiring journey. Her stories show the values which got her through the hardest times in life. Her connections to family, nature and writing speak of the person she is and aspires to be.